In the middle of Jerusalem is Redeemer Lutheran, a beautiful 19th century Gothic church. Each Sunday, a small and shrinking congregation gathers for worship. Ghassan Kassabre is Redeemer's organist. We are Christians, we are Lutherans. Ghassan and his eight-year-old son Salim are at church each Sunday without the rest of their family. Rimaz, Salim's mother, is also a member of Redeemer, but she can't legally worship with her congregation and family. The whole Kasabre family is Palestinian. All five were born and baptized in the Holy Land. The Kasabres are a forbidden family. Ghassan was born in Jerusalem, an Israeli citizen. Rimaz comes from the West Bank. They can't legally be together because of an Israeli law that prohibits citizens, like Ghassan, who are married to residents of the occupied territories, from living in Jerusalem or anywhere in Israel with their spouses. The ongoing conflict in the Holy Land is complex. It involves religion, land, and economics. Palestinians have killed Israelis. Israelis have killed Palestinians. Now, a new wall is being built. We have 23 families living behind checkpoints and the wall. It is impossible to visit them by car. I have to walk. And it takes two hours to visit just one family. For them, it's difficult just to get to church. Our members are delayed at checkpoints. They live behind the wall. We are noticing the difficulties that our congregation in Jerusalem is facing. It will be divided into not only two but three, some who are within the wall, some who are behind the wall, and some who are in the seam zone. That means it's between the wall and the check post. Israel calls it a security fence. Palestinians say the wall is a land grab and designed to divide Palestinians from Palestinians. Well, the wall is basically, according to the state of Israel, they, they, they call it the security wall, and they're building it, according to them, to separate Israel from Palestinians. But actually what the wall is doing is separating Palestinians from Palestinians, and it's being built on Palestinian land. Palestinian state. According to the Israeli government, the security barrier is temporary. Exact drawing of the border. No Israeli wants barriers. And no Israeli even thought about uh, erecting any kind of barrier until people started to die in Israel by suicide attacks, by terror attacks. Uh, the number of suicide attacks, for instance, just in 2002 was 60 successful suicide attacks in one year. Sometimes it was more than one a day and people were going to work and they didn't know if they're going to return back home. The moment terrorism stops, there is no need for the barrier. The barrier will be moved. The issue is not, is not the wall. The issue is human rights. And uh, in a sense, segregation and discrimination against Palestinians who, um, who belong in Jerusalem, have Jerusalem ID cards, and cannot live uh, in a way that um, allows them to live normal life. So if someone marries someone from outside Jerusalem, that person is illegal. The children cannot very likely live with their parents legally. So there are problems there that, that um, we're concerned about. The Kasabre family are not terrorists. But for them, the combination of the wall and the wrong ID card makes life a living nightmare. Ghassan and Rimaz are members of this congregation. Before she was married, Rimaz lived near Janin in the West Bank. So she never got a Jerusalem identity card. She is not allowed to be in Jerusalem. This has affected her family and church. She can't be a full-time member in the church. 
Rima's used to work as a school teacher in Jerusalem, but to get to work, she had to risk fines, harassment, and even jail. On my way to work, there were soldiers blocking the road. So I went around the mountain to the main road to the taxi. We crossed the first checkpoint and everything was fine. At the second checkpoint, they stopped the taxi. They saw my West Bank identity card and arrested me. They let me go, but I'm not allowed in Israel. I can't work in Israel. If they find me again, I won't be going to the police station. I'll go to jail. This wall is only separating Palestinians from Palestinians, especially for those living in Jerusalem. The wall is dividing the whole country into pieces. Basically, I do everything for the house. Anything that we have to do outside the house, shopping, hospitals, schools, I have to do this because she doesn't have mobility. She can't go out. There are over 500,000 Jews right now in Jerusalem. There are over 200,000 Muslims. And right now there are about 6,000 Christians left in Jerusalem. And that number will continue to shrink as long as these policies and the wall and other barriers for peace are, are enacted. It will keep people who are Christian and want to live in Jerusalem from continuing to live in Jerusalem. This is uh, where I was born. I always lived here, and I think I have the right to choose where to live. I want to live uh, in Jerusalem. I work in Jerusalem. My children go to school in Jerusalem. We have uh, our children, you know, getting their health care in Jerusalem. It wouldn't be easy to, to just move. We're not looking to make people's life harder. We don't want to create any problems to people. But on the other hand, you have uh, people's lives. So if somebody is being killed by a terrorist, that life is lost forever. So if you weigh on one hand losing life and on one hand making life more difficult, temporary, then I guess that losing life always is more important. We have said we don't need in the Holy Land at all walls. We need bridges. And we need, we need to see that these walls are moving to bridges of reconciliation and of peace and justice. Because we don't believe that the walls bring, you know, uh, uh, security. Uh, on the contrary, walls only will grow uh, more bitterness, more hatred. Because people feel they are isolated not only uh, from um, uh, their neighbors, the Israelis, but they are they isolated from their own people, the Palestinians, from their own land, from their own water resources, from their own agricultural fields and meadows and so on. Our message is love and peace. Our members are practicing that. We are not a risk for the security of Israel. On the contrary, we bring people together. The most important thing for Jews and Palestinians is to come together. We are trying to bring people together so that we may have peace.